Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Brown, and I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! Today, we're going to be making four cards in our Zoom card class, and we're going to be using the Splenda Day Bundle, the Rustic Harvest Bundle, and one of the new Halloween sets called Bewitched. I hope you enjoy the uh, class. If you need a demonstrator and you don't have one, I'd be happy to be your demonstrator. You can contact me by emailing rbrown177 at neo dot rr dot com. And I will be happy to fill you in on anything, put you on our mailing list, whatever you'd like to do. I also have a 24-7 online store at robinbrown.stampinup.net. And there you can purchase any of the items that Stampin' Up! sells. Um, we're going to begin in a little bit as soon as my class the friends start joining me and when they do I will restart the video and we will get to work as soon as possible. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, um, I wanted to mention a, a couple things that's going on with Stampin' Up! that I didn't realize was actually happening but it, it is, and it's kind of neat. If you go shopping on the um, online store, every week there is a different special going on. We had, and I didn't know we had, or I would have taken advantage of, the, of it myself. We had, two weeks ago, we had buy one kit, a card kit, get another one at half price. And I, I looked at what the, the um, and then we had the perfect partners uh, bundle kind of thing that's still going on. I don't remember what this week's is. And if you go on the website though, and look under the, uh, when you shop now, if you look under the specials, um, it'll it'll show you what the weekly special is. And those go for, you know, just for that week. And then the following week, another special is going to come out. So I, saw, um, I ordered yesterday. I saw that. Pardon? I ordered yesterday. I saw that. Okay. So that's going on. I don't know if that's going to continue forever or if it's just a little summer thing they're doing um, until the new catalog comes out. Unfortunately, um, some of the things like perfect partners were very hard to, uh, for, my, for my customers to get. Um, they're all gone already, you know, or they're not available, not orderable. I think they have fixed that now and that there are some of orderable. So if you're interested in the perfect partners, um, now would be a good time to take a look and see if they're back or not. Um, so that was going on. And then October 1st is World Card Making Day. And Stampin' Up! is having an online video extravaganza card making day where you do go along with the CEO of Stampin' Up! and she's going to make some cards display some products. Uh, so if you look up on the website World Card Making Day, it will explain which stamp set they're going to use and what, um, I believe there's a list of supplies that you need if you want to work along with them. I don't know how many cards they're making. I forgot the time that it starts in our area, but it is October 1st. Hmm. And it's open to demonstrators and customers. So 
should be a fun free for all. I don't know uh, whether it's going to be on Facebook or on Zoom or exactly what. The, I'm sorry, the details have just escaped me <laughs> this afternoon. I was up to four o'clock, so I'm not totally, <laughs> totally right in the head yet. But all the information's on the website if you're interested in doing that. Just I think when you open the website, actually, that's one of the very first things that's up on the top banner is World Card Making Day. So, all righty. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or problems that uh, before we get started here? Yeah, when are they getting the gnomes back? The gnomes? Um, gnomes. I will have to look up the... Uh, date, but I believe that it was September 26th. Good day. Um, there, I don't, you guys don't have access to the inventory status report. So I'll tell you what I do. I'll copy that off this afternoon and send it to you in email so you will know when you can try to expect to look for those. All right, that's about the best I can do because I just don't remember off the top of my head. There are so many on that list uh, that are not orderable or are, um, uh, there's no back orders. See, they don't do back order anymore. They just take them off and make them not available. So that way they don't get in trouble with back orders. So, cause it's more expensive supposedly for them to send out back orders anymore. Um, I am going to be doing two functions. Um, and if anybody wants to come join me, that's fun. Um, October 29th, I believe is a Saturday afternoon, maybe. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to be at the North Olmstead Masonic Temple on Lorraine Road. Uh, I can get you the address, but it's just down the street from Mary's church. Um, I think it's closer to Columbia and Clegg Road rather than the Stearns. But anyway, um, the Rainbow Girls there, the International Order of Rainbow for Girls, which is not anything to do with anything gay. Let's put it that way. It, it, it's not an LGBTQ thing. Oh, it's, Eastern Star. <laughs> it's a um, young lady's version of Eastern Stars or um, one of the other Mas Masonic uh, ladies fraternities. Anyway, um, and they're having a fundraiser. It's a vendor fair they're having. So they're going to have people from Color Street and 31 and uh, yeah. Stampin' Up. You know, so I'm going to be there. Um, and then also on November 5th, I believe it is, the first Saturday in November, I'm going to be doing the Middleburg Heights Historical Society crop. Um, they have a crop there where people sit and make their scrapbooks all day long. I believe it's $35 to sit there from noon until 10 p.m and they provide a dinner. Uh, and I'm going to be displaying some of my wares and um, doing a couple make and takes. And I believe you can come in just to shop. You don't have to um, actually be at the uh, cropping. You can come in and shop and see the different vendors that are around there. They have about 10 or 15 vendors and they also have like a um, a garage sale of retired items of all these different products uh, close to my heart and creative memories and 31 everybody um, donates something and then they have a raffle drawing as well so um, and then the third thing I'm doing and that's this coming Saturday, the uh, 17th. 
And if anybody's interested, I think I could get a ticket last minute if you're interested in coming. Uh, Night at the Races, our uh, church is doing, and um, it's to benefit the children's um, home of Medina County. And another uh, project is called Woven with Love. It's for um, supplying clothes for women, battered women and women of domestic abuse who need to get new jobs and go back out, you know, trying to rebuild their lives because they've left home without anything. So they're uh, trying to meet the needs of those people. And um, then the rest of it, uh, the rest of the money would go to the church itself for their continuing ministries. So just a fun night. So, okay, so let's get into this. Um, today's first card is going to be using the... Okay, Robin, I have a problem. All yeah. I'm seeing is a card on your sheet. Yeah, that's because... Okay. That's because I took my face off so that you could see what I'm going to be doing here. Oh, okay. Uh, my face should be on there somewhere, but it's probably a little tiny thing. No, nope. oh. the, only, the only person I see on the bottom is me. <laughs> All right, you need to set your view to gallery view. Uh, how do I do that? Little green dot. Whoops, nope, that didn't work. Or in the, the more dot, dot, dot. Okay, and green dot. Select gallery view. Nope, I don't see that. I don't know how to help you from my end. Okay, I've got more chat meetings, backgrounds. Raise hand, that's not it. You? You have something that looks like a little box that says view, tiny little one, all the way up in the right-hand corner. You're yeah. on an iPad, so it's hard for me to tell you. Yeah, no, I don't have that. Share content. I mean, well, as long as I can see what you're doing, that's all that yeah, matters. That's, that's why this is, the, I have what you call spotlighted. So okay. this picture always, always. That's the most important thing for me to see. <laughs> yeah, I will, switch, I will switch it back later when I'm done uh, demonstrating. We'll switch it back. Okay, so we're going to be using the Splendid Day um, bundle or Splendid Thoughts. Yeah, Splendid, Splendid Thoughts bundle. There's the stamp set. And then um, it has a matching set of dies that are called the Splendid Stems dies. And we're going to be using this one here later on in the, in the last part we do. I'll get it in there eventually. Uh, but this card does not use this one. It, <laughs> um, I, see, I told you I was foggy. It uses this one. All right. Fresh cut flowers. There it is using this stamp from Flesh, Fresh Cut Flowers and the Fresh Cut Stems dies. That's why I was having trouble is because they're very similar in name. Well, they're here somewhere. Okay. So the first thing I did now on this says uh, best wishes and happy thoughts. And then the inside I have a love and laughter forever after. I made it into a kind of a wedding, a wedding kind of card or an anniversary. So, but that's using this um, specialty designer series paper called Splendid Day. So it's got all this kind of fancy foil kind of paper in there. Really pretty stuff. Now the backsides of this are 
pretty, but they're not <laughs> they're not as pretty as the front. So we'll make be making three cards that use that kind of paper today. And I believe that's on page 65, I think, or thereabouts in the little catalog that paper is, if you're interested in it. All right, so the first thing I did was stamped out this image. And I have that routed up in my misty. to put this guy in here. I'm going to find my black ink, which I there we go. So I die cut out. Um, well, I actually stamped and then die cut. But I'm trying to show you how you can die cut and then stamp if you're going to do a bunch of things. That's great. And the, the dies that come with this have a, where are they? It should be in this box. Yes, they are. I don't know why I didn't think to look at the fresh, the fresh books have it. <sighs> yes. So this is the die that would cut that. And then I cut a one of these little guys here. It's like a, um, I don't know, kind of looks like a little pom pom plant of some sort. This. And then I, I cut that cut that into two pieces and use one piece up here and one piece over here. But the uh, die set has this wonderful little border in it. it. Looks really cute. And that's this border that goes along this side of the card here. So I cut that border. I've got that cut out. I cut a stylish shapes banner uh, to use for the sentiment. This is a little bit different than the one that I have on here because I cut this one by hand, but I like the idea of the um, stitched label better. So we're going to do that. And then we have a piece of or is this a soft succulent, I believe. And the inside is love and laughter forever after. So that should be stamped up. That's from for Forever Fern, if you uh, if you choose to use that particular. This is missing a piece of paper, which I'll have to go get. Hey, well, they're all missing it. Anyway, I forgot to put this piece of um, mint macaron back here for the inside. So that would be one of the layers that's missing, but let's concentrate on the front of this. Um, this is just a eighth of an inch smaller than the front of the card. That on there. This is like, uh, so that would be 
five and three eighths by four and one eighth. I'm putting on here. Plain white, plain white, basic white layer with a tiny And you'll take this piece that I've cut the border for you already. Um, I believe this starts out at four inches and one sixteenth. So you cut it at four and one sixteenth. And then when you cut the border off, it makes it so it fits right, right inside here. So it's four and one sixteenth wide and it's four and a, or five and a quarter tall. So we'll add that on here. I'm hoping that because I did that class on Sunday that my stuff isn't spread all over the place and I can't find it, which is, would be a a little bit of a disaster. So we're going to try to center this in this piece. Like so. And then this is a piece of the seafoam color of that splendid day paper that I was showing you about. So this is one of the choices of the paper. Um, that's the back side and let's see the iridescent color. Uh, Shiny side, I want the shiny side up. And this one is measurements here. It is two inches wide by five and one eighth inches tall. And that will fit right inside of here. This tiny little border. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of the front of the card. And then we're going to take our flower and I'll show you what we did with this. I have a, a block here. And I have a spritzer with some alcohol. And I'm going to take the, oh, the light mint macaron and I'm going to just all around here. Can't even see it. It's there. And then you're going to take your alcohol spritzer and spritz it. And you'll pick that up with uh, an aqua painter. Just to give a little color. To the centers of the flowers. You can see on here where I started, I kind of overdid a little bit in that color. You just want it to have a hint of color, not uh, a blob of color like I did that first time. And my phone is ringing, but you know, hey, sorry, I'm doing business here. <laughs> Let me. It's probably just a sales call anyway, so, you know. Why that turned black? I don't know. I must have colored that with the... So that's just a very... I think I want to do it a little darker. Let me get the dark mint macaron ones. I mean, light is light, but that's like really light. 
And you could do this by putting a puddle in the lid of your um, ink pad, but I don't know. I have a not so good feeling about um, putting alcohol in pan. See, now I got it really dark. But anyway, that's how it goes. Kind of move that around with alcohol. Not a little too much. But anyway, it's just a blush of color there. And then I took, I believe those are soft succulent markers. Which Oh, there they are. I know I used the other day. And I believe I used the light one first. I think I got a gem stuck to there. That's from that's from Sunday. <laughs> all right, so then I just color in all the leaves. I'll be there. I'll have to go back and fix that with my color lifter. And then when we're all done with this, we'll get our wink of Stella and give it a little glittery finish. And just like I do on all of my other ones, I like to take the darker and make the shadows, the kind of bottoms of the leaves. My son always comes from the same place too. And frame still. Mm -hmm. I don't know what went wrong with this thing here, but we're going to try to fix her up. It's a beautiful color. Probably should bring the other ones in as well because otherwise, it's going to look. I didn't color these in on the first one, but there's some kind of distortion here in the corner from something. I don't know where that came from. It's like wet ink, actually. But how it got there, I have no clue. So we'll just try to doctor it up so it still can be used. I'll use it anyway. All right, so the next thing is Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella. <laughs> All right, so we'll just pretend there's a piece of this twine in here. And all we did was wrap it around here to make it look like there was a bundle of burlap, kind of. See that close up. Ooh. See how it's wrapped around? All right, so I'm going to put a glue dot on the back of this, right down here on the bottom on the stem. So you'll have a piece of thread and a little tiny little bow that I tied there. 
And that's not a fork bow, so that'll come untied. So be careful with it. And then we're going to just start this on here. I laid the laid the twine in the um, in the glue dot that I put on there. And then we're going to wrap it around like um, I don't know. I don't know what else would be wrapped like that. I just wrap it around, trying to wrap it around anyway, uh, real close to each other. When you get down to the bottom, then you go back up one more time and stick the end of it. I don't know how critical this was. This is just what the designer did. And I thought it was kind of cool, but actually kind of odd too. So <laughs> I don't know. One of those little uh, things you can or cannot do. And if you want to give this some more strength, you could cut out two of these um, All right, so that's how I have it just wrapped around there. And then we'll put a glue dot on this little bow and put that on the end of it when we put it on the card. But the first thing we need to do is put some dimensionals. And we're going to put this down here so we know how far down our sentiment is going to go. why I can never find the large dimensionals when I'm pick when I'm going to find them I grab them and they're the little ones and I have no clue why that happens all the time but it does by the way this is one of the cards I, I made for God's work our hands so now that I have little ones on here, you know, I have to put twice as many. Take your pick tool, maybe, and pick these off instead of. Quite a few, but. You know me, I like the dimensionals. Oh. The lid to my take your pick. If I'm looking for it, I'll have to find it on the floor. And these ladies use this thing so easily and they pick these things right off and they keep on sticking until they get all the pieces on there. It works pretty good. I never tried it before. Just leave a little hole in your dimensional, though. Yeah, but nobody's going to see that. I'm not able to hear you guys at all. I don't know what happened to the volume, but it's real quiet. Or maybe you're just not saying anything. <laughs> when you're done, show us that. A stamp set again. Pardon? I said, when you're done, show us the stamp set again, please. The stamp set. Oh, fresh yeah. cut flowers. Is that what it's called? I'm gonna, I, you know, I said when you were done, you didn't have to do it right now. That's pretty. All right. So this is going to be down here like this. And I'm going to put this at a little bit of an angle. Just get stuck right on it like so. And then I have a tiny little, I have micro glue dots, which I'm going to use. But if you don't have any of those, Tiff and doesn't sell the micro ones. But if you don't have any of those, take a regular one and fold it up kind of and make it as small as possible so that when you put it on your bow, it's 
is literally all over the place. There we go. There's my phone. And then the last thing is best wishes and happy thoughts. And that's coming out of the splendid thoughts. No, it's not. Where is that coming out of? Oh my gosh. It's coming out of nature's prints. And I'm just going to put that on a block and stamp it on there. Try anyway. This block is way too big, but all my other blocks are put away, of course, and I stamped that with soft succulents. Little crooked. Not terribly, though. And I'm going to go around the outside, sponge the outside with the sauce sucking it. A little. Definition. Okay. I'll get a couple of those dimensionals. I got out of the frame, didn't I? And then Forever after. This is supposed to be mounted up in my stamping tool. Watch. I hate sentiments. They like to make halos. No, it is not. Anyway, the layer belongs under there. Uh, five and a quarter by four layer, and then this one is the uh, 
notice I didn't put one in here. I could have, we would have to cut this down a little, but we'll put it in here just like it is. Optional, col add color or not color to the inside. I will make sure I get it in your kit so you can have that option. There we are. And that needs the wink of Stella. This myriad of things I have here. Yeah, it's still it's still parked in whatever mode from my, uh, whatever mode was there the other day. I do like the the little bit larger. Um, Stitch direct uh, stitch shape because um, it's even. This one isn't bad though either. So, oh, and then you got to put those. I forgot all about those. Here they are. Oh. So, I cut one branch of this off, and all I did was stick some glue on here. Put a little on the back too, just in case it would not stick to front. Okay, and then I just under, and that's the problem with putting too many dimensionals on. Right? Could also put a couple little fancy gems if you like. Put a little more bling if you don't think it has enough. So there you go. So that's with fresh cut flowers and the Fresh stems, stamp, uh, matching dyes. What was the designer paper name? That is Splendid Day. And I think it's, I think page 64 of the mini. It's after the Christmas stuff. It's sort of in the back by itself. Okay, thank so you. You might miss it. I ordered two packages of it. I thought it was so pretty. All right. Get that off to one side. The next card I have for you is kind of whimsical. Like whimsy. I'm not too whimsical usually. <laughs> I thought this was just so darn cute. That says, this is an encouragement. <laughs> what is that doing there? An encouragement card. It says, we'll get through this together. I promise. <laughs> so I just thought it was cute coming up on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And um, it uses the bewitching bundle, which is the stamp set. Uh, bewitching is. Oh. I'm so sorry, ladies. I'm kind of like foggy brain here. It's somewhere. It's got a picture of those witches' feet in it. <laughs> Here's the witches' feet right there. And oh, there it is. <laughs> Bewitching. Okay. And then it comes with a punch that punches out the hats. 
And if you look at these hats, last year we had paper, DSP with those hats in it, but they were much smaller. So this is kind of cool. So uh, the pumpkin comes from the rustic or Hello Harvest stamp set that we used last month. And I just stamped a pumpkin on a scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to color it in with pumpkin eye markers. Remember if you're using um, Stampin' Right markers, which I'll show you when I have, I have to use it for the uh, matching colors here. Um, if you're using that, you're, you're going to need to stamp this and stays on. If you're not, then you want to use Memento Tuxedo Black. And we're going to cut the stem off. So you don't need to color that part. And just like we did on all the other uh, things that have petals or are round, I color in the areas that are dark first. And then I'm just filling it in with pumpkin pie light. This is pumpkin pie rather than, what did I use last time? Oh, Cajun craze. That one looks nice. Now, if you have um, gorgeous great paper, this would look really good with gorgeous great with the purple purple. I didn't have any, so I'm using the new in color Orchid Oasis. Mm. And there is not a Stampin' Blend for that yet. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, my gosh. That's not very orchidy, though, is it? Pardon? I said that doesn't look very orchidy. Um, what does it good. look like? More blue? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, though. Beautiful color. I don't know how to say it's, it's a purplish blue, like a royal purple. Really pretty, though. Okay, and then I cut this out. Now there is a die that you could cut this out, but if you die cut it, it's gonna leave a little white around the edge. It, it just looks better. When you cut the stem off, it ends up looking better, I think, uh, just cutting it out. And it's not that, uh, challenging of a cut to make so here real quick now there's another sentiment set that i did not have um it says something like you're doing better than you think. And, <laughs> and, that, and that's what uh, the designer used. I didn't have that stamp set. So I ended up using the Here Together stamp set. And I don't think you can, I don't know if you took advantage of that when that came out. Um, it was some special during the summer. Um, during all the challenges they were having with race and people getting murdered and whatnot, they came out with this stamp set. Um, and then they came out with a skin tones set of blender pens, uh, uh, stampin' blends to match, mm. match up with it. So, um, yeah. So I took the, we'll get this through together and that I promise from here, but you could use any other 
cute little sentiment that you want, but you almost have to have the, the bewitching stamp set for the witchy feet. <laughs> yeah, they're stamped upside down, so it kind of gets confusing, actually. I didn't think it would, but it does. Um, when you have it upside down, you want to, you want to, Put it on the card piece like that and I'll go, oh no, then the writing would be upside down. So anyway, I'm going to take a piece that measures three inches by four and a quarter. Load that up in there. This one's real close to the hinge, so sometimes it doesn't like to work. And I know with this kind of stamp that it usually doesn't stamp dark, so you need to um, probably do it maybe three or four times to get a nice solid color there. Getting better. You need to once, once more at least. My wheel, the word wheel is not coming out too good, so I need to press a little harder there. Came out this time. Go. And this time, just the boots this time. Oh, what was that? Four, four times? If you have a juicier ink pad, it may not take that much. Anytime you have solid areas like that, it's hard. And then I'm going to flip this over and stamp the I promise on the inside, which will look just like that when you're done. Ta -da, ta -da. See, magic. And that's a standard, let's see what size is this. This is three and three quarter by five because you're going to have a layer inside a five and a quarter by four inch layer of orchid oasis or use your um no what did i say gorgeous great all right so i'm going to take this uh, because i'm going to try to tie in the colors here i'm going to um, color the stripes on her socks to match Oh, out of the moment. So, I'm going to do the daffodil delight for the buckles on her shoes. It's still a little wet. All righty, and then this is a piece of the Rustic Harvest um, Designer Series paper. And the back side has these cute little stripes. So that's when I took the orchid opulence and you can kind of lay this on here like so and see, you don't need to color all of it. You uh, just need to, 
going to center it and I'm going to put like a little mark so I know how far out at least I have to go. So then I just color from there out. A little for I go a little further in, but just to just tying all the colors together. All that takes. Alrighty, so we have our card base of basic black. Our inside layer of purple of your choice. Like I said, I used the orchid opulence. No, not orchid opulence. Orchid oasis. There was a color a long time ago called orchid opulence, and it, all the all of us demos get it mixed up. Orchid. It's a, definitely an orchid color, but it's pretty brilliant for an orchid. I thought orchid in my mind was a lot lighter. I promise for the inside. Like the blue one. There we go. Just knock something off the edge. I don't remember what it was. Okay, so then you'll need another layer of the uh, orchid for the front. So two pieces that are five and a quarter by four. Or your other choice would be to make the card back, um, that the card base. Got a little, happy little cut there. A ragged cut. I don't know how that happened. Must have had some glue on my blade. In there like so and then this goes about halfway down Again, this one gets a layer behind it. And this black layer measures four and a half by three and a quarter. I used up all my regular adhesive. <laughs> uh, some, is it Sunday? It's Sunday. And then our pumpkin gets some dimensionals. Oh, I should put this on last after I mash down the layer here. A 
Okay, so you don't want to put this this way, thinking that the legs are standing. You have to remember to put it upside down. And this gets centered right in the middle of the card. So, and then you just take your pumpkin and find an appropriate, good looking place. You want her socks in there. And of course you can put some sparkle on there if you like some bling. That's just a fun encouragement card for this time of year. Mm. I think I would like my pumpkin to be a little darker like this one. That's the second card. I haven't found the dimensionals that I want. Alrighty. Now, so these last two cards are uh, a little bit, maybe more. Uh, Easy than I normally do. You know, timing is everything, and that's just what happened to me this weekend. But it's really pretty. It does use the Splendid Day Designer Series paper. Ooh. And it's very sparkly. Very sparkly. Um, this, this is actually, the color is actually soft seed foam. Don't remember what that color is. Let me see what the colors that match are. Let me see. It's Calypso Coral, uh, Copper, uh, Fresh Freesia, and the back side of that is Petal Pink. Um, this is Soft Sea Foam, Soft Sea Foam, and this one is Sahara Sand but it all coordinates pretty well with the pool party. So this is a pool party card base. Um, this sentiment is from, the sentiments both are from Quiet Meadow. That's a card, uh, a stamp set we used a while back this year. And I think a lot of you have that. And I use the heartfelt love and caring thoughts are with you for the inside and the thinking of you um, for the label on the front. Of course, you can put anything that fits in that label or you can change the size of that label. Um, fairly uh, self-explanatory there. So, when you do this, I can get full party card base. I get piece of that beautiful pool party ribbon, like organza ribbon, and a pool party fork, fork bow. Mm -hmm. You'll get the inside pieces for the layer for the inside. And I have an extra piece for the front. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this ribbon to be encapsulated behind there instead of, um, even if you wanted to tie it all the way around, there's nothing to tie it to unless you make a layer. So these strips measure three quarters of an inch by five. If you put them all together across here and don't give any gaps, you can get five strips. So, of course, I would have to cut one more, but five strips will fit all the way across there if they're put, put right next to each other. 
However, if you want to save paper, because you know DSP is expensive, what can I say? Then we're going to um, mount it up with some gaps between and only put four. Get this out of my way. I keep snagging it with my tape. There we go. So I choose on this one to put my outside pieces on first and then try to line up the middle. Um, that's one thing that's an advantage with five pieces is you just butt them together as the, it, um, the spacing isn't so critical. Uh, but I kind of know how far from the edge this needs to be. It's about a whole quarter of an inch instead of an eighth of an inch from the edge. And whichever ones in whatever place you like, it matters not. Want to get your tops and bottoms even. Um, and then this is where you have to do some spacing. And that's our first one. Not really straight. Let's see if I can get it straighter. It wasn't off by much, but enough to cause a spacing issue. to put it down super duper. I'm just going to lay it on there first. And I'll put it super duper tight so I get the last one in there in case I need to move it. Maybe I might need to move this one. Make the spaces even. Okay. okay. And then you can flatten it down real well. Take your piece of pool party. And put it about one third of the way up. Stretched it across. And that piece of this, this ribbon thankfully sticks to the um, double sided adhesive really well. So, not too much of an issue stretching it tight across there. But it is an issue if you don't get it straight. <laughs> Did I manage to get it straight that time? Yeah, I think so. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take a glue dot stick it under this ribbon right about here, more here, a little bit onto this first section, and I'm going to squish it together like that. That will 
will make it look like when your bow is on there that it's actually tied around your Squish it real well. All right, so we'll put that on the front now. Okay. See, thinking of you, where are you? Thinking of you, inside sentiment, you might find it. Okay, and I'm going to use Coastal Cabana ink. Um, it's in the family of the um, Pool Party and Soft Sea Foam, but it's nice and dark and bright. So, have your oval. Try to get your oval as straight as you can. Even. the best way to do this is to stamp and then cut your oval. And I used the uh, layering, layering oval skies. I'm going to glue those two together. Get a little halo on this one, so I am going to be putting a little bling spot up there. All right, and then uh, dimensionals on the back of your label. I like to leave room for the ribbon to go through on this one. Don't put anything in the middle. On the back of the bow. Right on that place where you made the scrunchy spot. So you go wherever you want it. And then then the insight sentiment, which is from the Quiet Meadow, both the Thinking of You and the Insight Sentiment are both from Quiet Meadow. You can use whatever sentiment you like, though. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. You say something? Nope. Okay, one me. Oh, Carolee's got to answer her phone. There we go. Unknown caller. Inside in there.
what I do with my cell phone. Anyway, there you go. I was going to put right right there. I don't know if it shows up on the camera or not. Right there. This is a little halo. So I can put a rhinestone there. Anyway, that's that part. And our last one is going to use a process called the pencil, pencil shadow. Hmm. I could remember what, uh, what I did in my waning hours this morning. I can't even find the sample card. There you go. Oh, that's what I get. Okay, this is a actually this is purple posy. We don't have purple posy anymore. It was supposed to use fresh freesia for the card base. I didn't have enough fresh freesia for that. So what I used is the purple posy behind and then I made a layer of fresh freesia because they kind of go together, kind of. And then you'll have a layer of this beautiful paper again. This is the Fresh Freesia version of that Splendid Day paper. And this is the third largest of the stitched rectangles. If you wanted to just cut one, it would be three inches by, well, this is four and three eighths, but four and a quarter would work. All right, and that's gonna go in the middle. And then we'll have a card base for the inside. And we are. I have a couple little extra scraps left over that I decided that I would use as an embellishment on the inside of the card. And if I could my hands on the part, that would be really nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was sitting right here until, until it's not. <laughs> oh, golly. Well, just bear with me, definitely. Have a, an interesting, um, You get to see what happens. All right, so we're going to take this particular stamp from the Blended Thoughts stamp set. Okay. We are going to get some fresh freesia ink. And we're going to stamp it in whatever kind of direction we think is nice. Uh, on the front of the card. And there's another stamp that we're going to use. I don't know why I closed that stamp. Let's tear it up. Um, this is not the one I want, of course. It's Sending Hugs. And it is also from the Splendid Thought. Let's get that down in this corner, like so. All right, here's where the stencil comes in. Now, what I did was just cut one of those 
um, shapes out with the matching dies. And stems. yes, blended stems dies. So it would have been this one. Okay. I did not use the uh, the piece that I cut out. I'm using the stencil. So yourself. Ah, that's what fell on the floor before. Now I know what made the racket. My blender brush. All right, so then you take your stencil and you lay it over here. Just kind of hold it down with your hands. If you wanted to make sure it stayed still, I suppose you could use a blue dot or something on the back side. And I'm taking the fresh freesia, I'm starting on the outside and working my way across here. I'm just going to color right over the top of that. And you kind of, I don't know until you take that off how much color you have on there. Um, it can't go too much, really. I think that looks good. So I'll leave it right there. And that's your stencil shadow or stencil, stencil stamping. I forgot what you called it. <sighs> All right, so that's pretty much the front of the card. And then the inside of the card, we're going to stamp with with comfort and love. And the with comfort and love comes from, there's the sample. Oh, looky there. Ooh. Pretty. There's the sample. Comfort and love. And that's what I did with the embellishment piece that I had left over. Why did you show up sooner? <laughs> All right, so let's get back to our stamping dimensionals. All oh, over the place now. I think I like it a little bit lighter than I did on this one. And you can also, on the bottom on the inside of your card, I didn't do this on the other one, but I'm going to do it on this one. But just paint this flower here in the corner. You can also do that on your envelope. And that changes what I'm going to use for an embellishment. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. I would put the embellishment over here this time. Looks pretty good right there. The other one I didn't put the flower inside, so I had the embellishment on the bottom. So we'll change that up just a little bit. This is like a scrap that I would normally throw away, but it's so pretty. Oh, did you see what I just did? <laughs> it's smudge. My heart got a smooch. Something like that. Oh. Oh. 
got your ankles. I would normally throw that away and start over, but we're going to continue to say that was enough. Alrighty. Then the fresh freesia layer. It's, now, this is supposed to be fresh freesia ribbon, but it doesn't exactly match. If I tended one of those, um, those schools of ribbon, I went through and changed it to gorgeous grape to match something else. I love the extra backup of the card, so I forgot about that. So that's probably gorgeous grape color instead of first region color. But hopefully it matches the uh, cozy that we got going in the background. Yeah, it kind of matches that. Put this beauty, beauty layer on. Uh, you don't have to use sparkly paper. You could use uh, a fancy DSP as well. But I wanted to show you the technique of using the uh, stamping and then using the stem stencil to color it. And then our stitched rectangle. Like I said, this is the third largest one. I was thinking about making it bigger, so it's a good thing I did because this one looks just like it. And we do that on the back of the bow. Down. And I did put three rhinestones on here, but they've uh, they found their way into the abyss of I don't know where. So I will eventually put them on there, but that's what the finished part looks like. That. And the inside of this one is like so. And I'll put something there to cover that. I don't know what. That's it. So that's all four cards for the day. Hey, very nice. Thank you. I love the witch's feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that cute? Now you could just turn that easily into a, a Halloween card, except I don't know what Halloween. Well, it's kind of scary. Maybe if they had one that said, hey, it's scary down here. <laughs> that might look be cute, but. Uh, I'm going to make it into a birthday card for my son. Oh, cute. <laughs> His birthday's on Halloween. Oh. All righty. So. Um, They're all very nice. I really like them. Yeah. I, this this paper is just absolutely gorgeous. If if I don't like to, well, I say I don't like to buy paper. I like to buy paper and then hoard it and not use it. Oh, <laughs> I've been known to do that. <laughs> I have one, two, three, four milk crates full of DSP <laughs> that I wow. haven't used. I, I liked mean, this paper when I saw it in the catalog so much that I bought two packs right up front because some things you run out of stuff good. and. And it is really pretty on the back. It's just not as, it's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not use the front. I, you know, I would, I would not, uh, because it's a little bit more expensive because it's foil. I think it's $15 instead of 12. Um, I, I kind of treasure it a little bit more. So yeah, but this, this would make good cards for me to give to our pastors who didn't get the cards that they thought they were going to get. <laughs> so, 
so I can add a couple of these real quickly to, you know, make them up really quickly and add them to their um, stash. And I, you can make that in the, in the copper just as well, you know, in the copper, or the Sahara sand, you can change your color up um, to match whatever. I just like, I thought this was uh, pretty and I had the supplies to make it, so. Alrighty, uh, I'm going to turn off the recording, but I thank you all for coming and we'll see you next time, but you guys can stick around.